nestled in a valley of sandstone cliffs, Petra's beauty is owed to its otherworldly, almost sci-fi quality. It's hard to believe that this ancient city doesn't just live in someone's imagination, with its reddish-orange clay hues and dwellings carved right into the mountainous sandstones. Petra makes the perfect setting for the biblical and Judaic stories that preside here. It is said that the ancient city was where Moses struck a rock from which water burst out. Around 300 BC, an Arab tribe known for their impressive chiseling and carving skills, the Nabataeans settled on this important site and made it their capital. Like Chichen Itza, the area flourished especially economically due to its role in trade. They left valuable insights into their civilization, like the breathtaking rock-cut monuments, watering systems, tombs, and other buildings. Petra was largely abandoned over time after changing trade routes, a series of earthquakes, and finally the Crusades. It was only rediscovered in 1812 by Swiss traveler Johann Ludwig Burckhardt. How adventurous it is to think that modern archaeologists just happened on the fortifications or dwelling places of these once-dominant empires. Like Petra, the Incan citadel of Machu Picchu was discovered fairly recently in 1911 by Hiram Bingham, though indigenous tribes have been using the site and some have happened upon it earlier too. Bingham first believed that Machu Picchu was the secret city of Vilcabamba, but that was disproved after further excavations. What archaeologists found was a vast empire full of innovative engineerings like using terracing for agricultural purposes and carved stone to connect plazas, dwellings, and other major parts of the fortification. Researchers still don't know exactly what Machu Picchu was used for. Perhaps it was a retreat for the high classes or an estate for the Emperor Pachacutu. These are the prevailing theories since the remains found at Machu Picchu were from all over Peru. Those that died here did not live here based on their short-term diets and parasites found on the bodies from other parts of the country. Even the animals on the stronghold were not native to the mountain. In any case, the extremely well-preserved temples, terraces, plazas, and residences are a testament to the advanced society that occupied the mountain in the 15th century. The power of love can really drive us to do the most bewildering things. An astonishing example of Mughal architecture, the Taj Mahal was built by Emperor Shahan Shahan for his wife to be buried in after she died in 1631, delivering their 14th child. The mausoleum is far more than just a burial ground. Set aside the Yamuna River, the expansive site also includes a garden, a reflecting pool, and a museum. The entire endeavor took about 20,000 men in 22 years to complete. But that wouldn't matter to Shahan, whose wife, Mumtaz Mahal, was near and dear to him. Despite being married to two other women, Shah Shahan had a deep affection for Mumtaz and had no interest in pursuing his other marriages past their political significance. Shah Jahan wanted to commemorate his most trusted companion with a harmonious and grand architectural complex, a splendor that could capture how the emperor felt toward his beloved Mumtaz. While he planned to be buried across from his wife in his own mausoleum made of black marble, Shah Jahan was deposed by his son Aurangzeb in 1658 and then imprisoned for the rest of his life. Love at its best and its worst, the Taj Mahal's history is as incredible as the mausoleum itself.